Chapter 3, Section 4, Question 1. I have changed how I taught this problem because of the sheer number of students who have gone on to their 121 college math class and have failed their first test because they have forgotten this formula for slope. I cannot have you forgetting this very key formula. So, you're going to do formula plug work answer. The formula on every single time you use this is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is going to be one of the four things I will be checking for on this problem. Then, we need to look at this. This is our x and y, and this is also an x and y. This is our first x and y, and this is our second x and y. Now, if you want this to be your first x and y, and that to be your second x and y, it'll still work. But usually the, that's the first thing's first and the second thing's second. All right, we're going to plug in. We have y2 is negative 6 minus y1 is 4. x2 is 7 over x1 or minus x1, which is 3. So that is our plug step, our work step. We get negative 10 over 4. Answer. Our answer, as we come up here into our next column, reduce that to negative 5 over 2. So these are the four things I'm looking for. Formula, plug, work, and answer. Chapter 3, section 4, question 2. We're going to solve using the slope formula, and I still want formula, plug, work, answer. So the formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, I say x2. This is x sub 2, and this is y sub 1. So the subscript numbers are not exponents. Some people put them regular size, or they'll put it up at the top. Up at the top, that is an exponent. That is wrong. Regular size, that would be like coefficient. That would be wrong as well. We're going to plug in. This is our x and y. This is also our x and y. Notice. I have viciously put an x in the y spot. That is tricky. Be very careful on that. This is our first x and y. This is our second x and y. This is our slope. We're going to plug in our slope here. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you have a teacher who wants this x on the left-hand side, now would be the time to switch them around. We're going to combine like terms. I'm going to keep that negative in the numerator. There's nothing I can do with x minus 4, but I can take 7 minus 3 and get 4. I want to get common denominators. I'm solving it in this way. I could cross multiply, but I'm making common denominators and getting rid of the denominators because of chapter 6. That is a chapter that many students have struggled in. And this time I'm going to write it so that I'm not accidentally writing over other symbols. I now have a common denominator and an equal sign. Phew, they're gone. Negative 10 equals x minus 4. Add 4 to both sides. And you will get that x is equal to negative 6. Now, this is algebra, and one of the cool things about algebra is that if you want to work harder, you can check your answers and possibly get 100% on all of your homework, quizzes, tests, everything. It's wonderful. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope by putting in a negative 6 here. And we're going to find the slope on the side using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That will give me negative 10 over 4, which will reduce to negative 5 over 2. It's negative 5 over 2. This is how you would check your answer to make sure that the answer that you've got here works. I don't need you to show me that you did that. If you do that in your head, if you do that on your paper, great. Just make sure I know which one is the actual answer. This is the answer. Chapter 3, Section 4, Question 3. Often, we go forwards and then we also go backwards to make sure that you really understand the concepts that we're trying to teach. So here, we have an equation that has already been graphed out, and we want to know, can you find the slope? 
Remember, slope is rise over run. So as we go from left to right, we can count out down two, right three, down two, right three, up two, left three, down two, right three will give us a slope, which is m equals down two, right three. That's the slope. Then, the y-intercept, the y-intercept is this point where it hits the y-axis. It's not just three. We have to give it as an ordered pair. It has a reminder to write it as an ordered pair, and a lot of students still don't write it as an ordered pair. So this is three on the y-axis, so the three goes on the y spot and the x is zero. That is our y-intercept. Then we want to take them and put them together in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So the formula is y equals mx plus b. The m is your slope, y equals negative 2 over 3, the letter x. The slope doesn't have an x on it, and a lot of students accidentally put an x there. And some people, instead of putting a 3 here, they'll put the order pair 0, 3. This is just the 3 there. That is your equation in slope-intercept form. Make sure we can read that too. This is our y-intercept written as an ordered pair, and this is our slope written as a fraction. Now, important safety tip, if that was a negative 3 over 2, you could not make that into negative 1 and a half. A slope has to be a fraction that has a rise over a run, so it can't be a mixed number. Here, we're going to be graphing, and we have been graphing these for a while. This is in function notation because it has an f of x, but we might, might want to change it into slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b because we've been using that for a lot longer. They want to know what is the slope. Well, the m is the slope, so m is equal to 2 fifths. Be careful. Many students accidentally write 2 fifths x. And then the y-intercept. This is the intercept. It is 1, but be careful. The 1 has to go in the y spot, and we need a 0 in the x spot. And then we need to graph it. So starting off at the point 1 and following, up to right 5, or the opposite, down to left 5, down to left 5, we can find all the points we need to make a wonderful line, lining up our straight edge next to the line, holding it in place, slightly past the edges, arrows at both ends. Those ordered pairs, those points that we made, important to make sure that we hit those points. Even if you are off by a tiny bit, as long as I saw those, that would be great. But if you were off by like a half a box or more, then you'll have to erase it and redraw it. But that's another reason why you don't use pen in math. Chapter 3, Section 4, Question 5. Generalize lines of mistakes. Now, we're not trying to teach you how to make mistakes. But a lot of students make mistakes on these, not during chapter three, section four. They make mistakes on this when it comes to the test. And the reason is, after we learn this and graphing lines, we're then going to go on to graphing inequalities, which is lines that have shading. Students see the inequalities and they start shading. That's not what we're looking for. So what we're doing is we're trying to find a single line that matches a slope of greater than zero and a y-intercept of less than zero. If you can just take this information, go to this grid that doesn't even have a grid on it, go to these axes and just draw a line that answers that, great. But some students have a harder time with that. So this is a skill that will help you on your SATs and ACTs. We're going to have, take this and make a simpler problem. Give me a slope that is greater than zero, like one. Give me a y-intercept that is less than zero, like negative 1. That would make the equation y equals mx plus b, that line there. We're going to estimate what that would look like. It's going to hit at y equals negative 1, and it will have a up 1, right 1 slope, which will look approximately like that. That has a slope greater than 0. It's going uphill. It has a y-intercept less than 0. It hits under the x-axis. That is a perfectly fine line. 
as is a whole bunch of other lines that you could draw down here, but I only want one. Next, we have a slope of zero. Now, consider, I could have a positive slope. I could have a negative slope. I can have a slope of zero, which is flat. I can have an undefined slope. Ah! All right, a slope of zero. So, we're going to have a slope of zero and a y-intercept less than zero, like negative one. If you did that in y equals mx plus b format, from chapter one, the multiplicative property of zero, zero times anything is zero, that gives you y equals negative one. That's why when we were graphing the boring lines from before, y equals negative one was a flat line parallel to the x-axis to the best of your ability at negative one. Since the slope was zero, it has to be a horizontal line. And because of the y-intercept less than zero, it just has to be any line below the x-axis, and that'll be fine. Next, a slope less than zero, such as negative one. A y-intercept greater than zero, such as positive one. y equals mx plus b. I want a rise over run. So, it's going to hit somewhere above here and have a negative slope. Approximately down one, right one. Long lines, slightly past the edges, arrows at both ends. As long as it has a slope less than zero going downhill and a y-intercept greater than zero above the x-axis, it's fine. A slope of undefined. All right, so positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, and undefined what? slope. This is going to be a vertical line. We were graphing these a couple of sections ago. So x-intercept is greater than zero. You need an x number greater than zero, like one. It is going to be a vertical line, approximately at one. Notice that I'm doing my best to make this line parallel to this line, this line parallel to this line. Ta-da! 